familiar name. With anyone that comes and sprints on the African continent, she's always there in the Gambia. What about his um, vastly experienced, he's a favorite uh, in this semi-final. I've been flying the flag of her country almost solely at international level at athletics for many years. And by any unforeseen circumstances or any injury or unexpected blow, we expect that she take the semi-final. So, Gina Bach of Gambia, the favorite in this particular race, has to get ready to go. She's in lane four, Alexei Garner's Mary Blackshit. So off they go, running well, it's uh, Gina Bach, look at her, she's grounded, very focused, but in lane two is Claudine. But Gina Bach is not breaking a sweat, she takes it easily for Gina Bach, 11.37. And the crowd goes go up because that's how good it was. Gina Bard, surely she's the favorite to win the gold medal at these African games. Well, the pride of Fabia, she showed the, the, you know, the, the, the class, the difference in class. She never went out of second gear there to the pass. And just to check to ensure that she finished uh, ahead of the pack. And there's no doubt, there's no doubt that the African senior champion was the favorite and she was in control of this. And you can see she was out of the blocks before everybody else was. Look at the stride, the persistence, and the fluidity. Um, That's the word, fluidity. That was she tried to stay with her, but she just didn't have enough in the time. She came to it as well for the Ghana Navy of Naval Officer. She had a presence of mind to be looking to her left and watching and to be looking to her right as well at the Zambian Army. And you know, we think about experienced runners is, is look at her figure as she's running. She's very straight, yep. she's very grounded, and look at that, I mean, she's the fastest in qualifying. Tomorrow's final would be absolutely Buzz it because there is a local girl, Mary watches sneaks through 1164. She will be in that lineup for tomorrow's 100 meter final of the women. But Nigeria will have two as well. And if they are positioned in there, the Nigerians are going to be in the final of the 100 meters. And I think Watch it benefited from being paired with one of the fastest runners in this women field and the current African senior champion of the 100 meters, Gina Bass. And it's I also the defending champion the event, yeah. actually. In yeah, the African Games as well, you know, she just proved her along. 11.64 from watching, which is just 0.01 seconds behind the time that the winner of the second beat won it with. And uh, the was good enough to qualify her for the final. But Gina Bass, with the fastest time, time. 11.2 seconds, 7 seconds, that's the fastest of the women's. Um, um, I'm going to be taking some final races. She's going to be great. Don't give it back. Excellent. Banabas again of Ghana as we line up for the men's uh, semi-final one of the men's 100 meters. The home crowd, look at that, is urging the fans to uh, be get a bit louder. The Jewish Ekanim consider. It's also in the lineup. Sitali of uh, Zambia. And uh, Botswana in the absence of Lechile Tibogo. Zadi Botswana. And now Safuan Sam of Ghana. Very well known. So two Ghanaians in the race. In semi final, one of the men's 100 meters. And that will be. An exciting one indeed, a winger of Zambia, another national champion, Gary Noel of Mauritius is the national champion, Barnabas again of Ghana is in lane 4, in lane 5 is Claude Emmanuel of Cameroon, he won his heat. And having consider of Nigeria is looking to make the or keep the crown in Nigeria because the last 100 meter race at the last African Games 
in Rabat in 2019 was won by Nigerian Raymond Ekebio. He's not here. The bronze medalist from that race, Ishikiri, is actually here as well. And then there's Kakini, Sitali of Zambia, Masasa Kuto of Botswana, and Ghana Sakwansa. He qualified as the fastest loser also in this particular semi final one. The men, 100. So just to recap, there will be two automatic qualifiers from each of the three semi final races. The fastest and automatic qualifiers. We qualify to join them in the finals of this event. Two of them. We qualify to join the six that qualify automatically. So it's Mwinga, Moajero, Barnabas, Claudio Mano, Sida, Sitali, Kuku, and Saku. The first of three seven finals. The first one to meet us. Well, consider, consider them. That's the question. Or will Kosuba be concerned? Semi-final one of the men's other meters. Don't they go? It's a strong start from Panabas again. But so is Noah Jurea of Cameroon. The Nigerian considers running strongly from behind. Consider has considered them. And the victory is here. He punches the air. And uh, Ekanin consider that was a really confident victory from the Nigerian. He didn't start well, had to come from behind, but he did it rather impressively. Rather impressively, he was in control of this race right from the beginning um, and had to go for strike. Interestingly, I get the Ghanaian on the left hand side of Sida appeared to have been quite comfortable enough to know that he was qualified. He did that with the final and on his paper. So that's got to get a bit of consider. It's, uh, it's wobbling a little bit. It's a strong finish to the race. But as I get of Ghana in the big white headband, may have made it through as well. So confirmation, he did finish second, the Ghanaian. So it's Nigeria first, Ghana second, then 37 and 10 42. Panamas again will be in tomorrow's final. Panamas again knew that he was finishing in second and he used that. Almost dangerous because BB Gary and Noah Sherell who finished in third was closing in on him. And can he consider the, the player winner of this race? And he seemed to be high to not to use that but it was just a big show of his qualification into the finals. And he did it. So that's how he finished. And can he consider 10 37 qualifying in first? Banabas Ake of Ghana, 10.42, qualifying in second. Gary Noel Jarrell, 10.47. He will have to wait for the rest of the races to see if he makes it through as one of the two fastest losers. Interesting, well, this is the second successive race that Jarrell, BB Noel, Gary from uh, Mauritius finished in third. Because he finished in the same uh, time in the first heat and still managed to qualify for the next stage. Of as the fastest loser. Final. So will he be a second time lucky? And the man in your short, another Nigerian in there. So Nigeria in the sprints have got men and women everywhere. They've got one in the semi-final, one they've got another. Oh, the lights might just have gone off inside the stadium there, hasn't it? Well, it's not all the lights. I think one of the lights um, has gone up. It probably will delay the start of this particular race. But, you know, speaking about Nigeria and, yeah, ubiquitous <laughs> participation in this event, you would have it no other way because Nigeria is the most successful African country. At the All-African Games, they've won more medals on the track than any other country. And they always have a way of reproducing generation and after, generation after generation after generation of, of sprinters, they had both women and men. They had two men on the podium at the last African Games, with Raymond Ekevio and Ishikiri, uh, winning gold and bronze in the process. 
And uh, like you indicated, there might have been an issue with the lights, so it's going to delay the start of this semi final. But the lineup is complete with Mahmoud Shakir of Morocco in lane two. There is an uh, on field carving of Botswana in lane three. Ghana's Benjamin Azamati is in lane four. He is an old student of this university. He started and mastered his craft on this particular track, so he's got big support for him. There is Cameroon's Emmanuel Alapwede, who also won his heat. Yep. And now we're going to, you're going to get the loud cheer for this man. So that's Olapwebe of Cameroon. He won his seats. The Nigerian Israel Okon as well. Sunday Okon also won his heat. In Berlino, in Gagele, another Cameroonian who won his heat. And we've got Maganga Gora of Gabon. And completing the lineup is Namibia's Elvis Gassel. Semi final two of the men's one. 100 meters. A lot, a lot of local interest in there, and perhaps one of the most fat because of how many heat winners are in this one. Absolutely. It's Shakir, Calvin, Azamati, Alobwede, Israel Okon, Ngangweli Evelina, Ngangagora, and Gassel. And the second of the three semi finals of the men's. 100 meters. So Mati also won his heat, didn't he? He did. In 10.54 seconds. So this is going to be tight indeed. The Lincoln, you miss it. Lots of people will be holding their breath. And off they go. The mark as Mati is getting off his uh, his mark really well. He's in a slight lead, but it's uh, a semi. The Cameroonian running really well as Mati drops to the finish line in second as well. And the Ghanaians are cheering because they will have two men in the final of the men's 100 meters tomorrow. That's two chances for a medal for the home crowd. But Nigeria's Eseme, I beg your pardon, Cameroon's Eseme is the winner. Emmanuel Eseme also won his heat. He's a big, big character, Emmanuel Eseme. And uh, he looked very comfortable at the end there, didn't he? Why not? Because he's making blistering time. Not only the he won his heat in 10.15 seconds. That big. was the fastest. It was the fastest big lad with a stride of a 200 meter runner. And once he got out, he was quite clearly the guy who was going to win this. As a easing up just in time as his Nigerian opener. I'm really not sure why Ocon eased that though. Because He's not qualifying as an automatic qualifier. He was finishing in third, so he needed the time. So unless he knew that the race was quick, that didn't seem like a, a wise decision. We'll wait for the official confirmation of the times, and here they are. 10.23 is really, really quick. 10.41 for the Ghanaian. And the point, 10.47, he would have to wait after the third semi-final to know whether that is thick enough to qualify so the third and final semi-final but we were talking about a semi he's an african champion uh, a championship silver medalist uh, at the world indoor championships he made the final he's a winner of the Frankfurt games and the two times he made the final at the couple war games certainly not one to push around but I'm quite impressed, particularly with the consistency of the time that he's running. Uh, most people are running above um, 10.30 so far in all the heats and in the semi-finals we've seen. But then he runs 10.15 and then in this race just gone by, he runs 10.23. And the way he is up in the final 20 meter shows, he's got lots more in the tank. So he certainly wants to keep an eye out for in the finals of the men's 100 meters. And at this stage, it's quite clear that he is the favorite based on the quickness of the times. Emmanuel Lissemi's personal best is 
approaching the third and final semi-final heats of the men's 100 meters. Chiwamba, Justice, Matthew Kelly of Zimbabwe. Justice Chiwamba finished fifth in the lead to the heat number one, which was won by Manuel Ose. Rahima Kamara, another Gambian who has made Gambia proud, Ibrahima Kamara. He's also a multiple world championship participant. And that uh, is Akira. Oh, it's what he say. He is a bronze medalist from the last African Games in Rabat. Surely he will be one of the favorites. on and uh, we can uh, finally do E3. It's been a bit of a fluctuation with the electricity inside the stadium but uh, we are back on now and uh, heat well, semi-final three of the men's 100 meters. Ishariche, Ibrahima Kamara. Oh that's a Really poor early start. It's going to be a, a false start. They've been called back, and I think it's the Zambian in lane one who has uh, got up too early in Chuamba. Ah, oh, it's Chuamba. It's uh, it's got up really early, way too early. It's a big, big trouble. Is he not? Well, revival. That's his name. Revival Winger. Wimba just bloated the copy book because I was just about to comment on how we've had very smooth starts so far in all the sprint events without any false start. He certainly had the quickest reaction time and when they checked they would realize that he, his, his reaction time was probably illegal and he would get the red card so he would not erase it but they are well, in lose it. We've seen some of them giving uh, green cards in the process so we'll see what happens but this is not looking good for the Zambian. It is not looking good at all. The officials are reviewing the tapes before they make a decision. And uh, check the reaction time of each of the, the runners, the athletes, and then determine whether the reaction time was within the. He's off. He's off. I mean, it was, it was, it was run by Justice. It's been disqualified. This reaction, uh, according to track rule number 16.8, which is the four start rule. And uh, he had no qualms whatsoever. He knew. He knew. So I mentioned Ibrahima Kamara of Zambia, uh, of Gambia. He's been in multiple competitions alongside Gina Bass. Just the two of them always wakes in the country's flag. But it's a Kiri. Is a bronze medalist from this event uh, four years ago, rather five years ago, from Nigeria. There's two Zambians here, Gambians here. What do I keep saying, Zambia? Adama Jame. Oh, another false start! My word, what is going on? They've been called back again. We saw this in the heats. And this is not great. We're going to look at. Here, but another 
Atlet is in big, big trouble. Well, well, well. Ah, uh, it's the uh, gentleman out. Zimbabwe is uh, Metukela out in lane two, who just got up way too early. He knows. He knows. Quite a shame. We lost. We lost Jasper. Uh, well, it's been given to the wrong person, hasn't it? Ibrahim Kamara has been red carded. Um, I have a feeling this will be challenged. It doesn't look like he was the offender, does it? No. The replay showed that it was uh, Makusha and Goni Motikela from Zimbabwe who had a fire such reaction. So I'm really surprised. Well, let's see. Well, Kamara is he's coming back on. Yeah. Right. Surely that has to be a mistake. It is a mistake. I'm convinced about that, and there will be a review. And uh, Makusha and Goni lucky guy in the first instance i'm not sure he will pass the test the second one. Oh, okay he, he, he didn't move he did he did he did start it though because that's that's one of the things about the rule so making an attempt to move we'll wait for the information because he didn't make the first attempt but he didn't get off the block so he so Ah, okay. This is could Mapusha argue that he was spoofed because of the move That's the point, him. exactly, by Kamara. Exactly. So it's a tough one for the officials. We'll see we have seen this before in the past in track, multiple times. Where the athletes next to the one that made the initial shimmy, if you like. It was a shimmy with head movement, but he did not move off his mark. It was well, the Keller who moved off his mark. And like you said, he could argue he moved because of Ibrahima Kamara's body movement. So this is a uh, this is taking time to consider. That's because certainly it's not an easy decision. So the field of eight is already been whittled down to six. Juf uh, Ali did not start. Juf Ali of the Gambia didn't start. Kamara Ibrahima. Well, we are clear whether he will be disqualified. Um, but justice. justice has already been disqualified. What a shame it would be if the Gambian runner Kamara Ibrahima. What a big shame. What a big shame. Two athletes in the race. One did not start. We are not sure what reason the location had not started. We don't know if Mapusha Mutikela will be allowed. Uh, there you go. And this is the right decision. So, yellow card for Ibrahima Kamara. Nothing for uh, uh, the Zimbabwe Matakela, and that is the right decision in my opinion. Because the Brahma Kamara scooped Matakela. There you go. There you go. So, and in a yellow card because, like he said, he didn't move he didn't. off his mark. Yeah. But his movement caused Matakela to leave his mark. It's a fair decision. It's a fair. Outcome. Brilliant decision. Hopefully, we can get off the mark now. Brilliant decision by the officials. So, Brilliant decision. By the official, this is only the fairest out you could have imagined. So, out of an original eight, we have only six started it's Montekela, Ibrahima, Aluka, Ushirute, Jame, Ofe Jamaica, and Jazz. It's this Chivamba who has been disqualified. And there they go. Finally, we have a race on our hands. It's Ibrahima Kamara running really strongly. Look at him out in lane two, but a Nigerian. It's security, it's come up strongly. The bronze medalist from five years ago in Rabat takes another win. Another victory from Nigeria. Surely he knows he could be on the podium yet again. Yes. Him alongside Eseme and Azamati. That's a race we have in our hands on tomorrow's final. It's a show of power and acceleration. He had a good start, but it was Ibrahim who had a better start and led the race for three quarters until the final 30 meters or so where the Nigerian showed all his experience and skills uh, to finish. But the interesting thing is the question about who finished second. It would appear as if Ibrahim Kamara must have finished second, but Mukusha, the man who almost got disqualified, finished like a train. And I'm, I, I can't wait to see the official confirmation of the results to see who would finish with Nigeria's Ushoriche. 10.29 for Itsukiri Ishoriche of Nigeria, 10.45 for Ibrahima Kamara. And you're right, Kamara got a brilliant start, got up the mark really well, but uh, Itsukiri, once he got onto his stride, what a finish in the end, knee-high running. It's a fantastic finish for the 
African Games bronze medalist. He knew Kamara was in the lead. He knew that it was neck and neck. And he managed just to accelerate in the final stages of the race. He didn't want any hanky-panky business. And it looks like the second and third athletes will wait for the official confirmation to determine. And in third place, uh, Gilbert Hanuka of Namibia, 10.40 says, qualifies as one of the fastest losers. The other fastest loser will be Gary Noir Jarrell of Mauritius. The rest of them confirming their places. Azamati Eseme. It's Shakire, all of them, Ibrahima Kamara, all of them making it to tomorrow's final. That would be... I have to say that I'm impressed with the lack of Dari Jewel. In the heats, he waited and he was one of the fastest qualifiers. And again, he's one of the fastest qualifiers. But what a final we have on our hands. I mean, it... So... There it is, confirmation of the lineup again for tomorrow's 100 meter final. Emmanuel Eseme of Cameroon ran the fastest time in qualifying, 10.23. Ishakiri of Nigeria, Ekanem Consider of Nigeria, Ghana's Kweku Benjamin as a Marti, Aget Banabas as well, two Ghanaians, two Nigerians, one Gambian, Kamara Ibrahima, one Namibian, Gilbert Hanuka, and one Cameroonian, Emmanuel Eseme. A very familiar tale in that 100 meters. And it's also an indication of what is to come in the 4x100 meters later on this week. It's Ghana, Nigeria with two representation each in that final with one each from Cameroon, from Namibia and also from the Gambia. The men's discus show on your screens now is the Algerian. It's a big throw for him. And... Uh, We'll see where that puts him in the ranking so far. Uh, he's kissing and blowing kisses into the crowd because I think he must have been in the lead. It's a big, big throw for the Algerian. Victor Hogan of South Africa, 62.56. Final throw. His final throw, he's in the lead. He doesn't seem impressed. And uh, he says uh, this is final throw for everybody. So once they get that throw in, and they say they get buys. Uh, we will see confirmation of the time there. But uh, Chanusi is taking a lot of uh, congratulatory handshakes. Let's see he won that. It's Victor Hogan, 62.56. Kanusi Osama, 59.97. And Ryan William, 55.42. Completing the result of the men's discus throw. So that's the final. So it's a gold medal for South Africa. A silver medal for Algeria. And a bronze for Ryan William of Namibia. 55.42 is a big throw and a big, big medal for the Southern African nation. Yeah, the interesting thing is that Kanusi Usama of Algeria, who appears to be celebrating more than everybody else, although he's won the silver with a throw of 59.97 meters, something like behind the gold medalist Victor Hogan of South Africa with Grand William of Namibia, setting for the bronze medal. Ghana, who got the Rex from, uh, finished further back in second place. So 62.56 meters is... Uh, just about one meter or so below the African Games record by El Ghazali, set in 2003 in Abuja, so 63.61 meters. Quite a considerable distance behind the world record. Uh, short <laughs> that world record for the last 39 years. Since 1986. 74.08 meters. Wow. Yeah, man. That's looks unassailable. And this was set by an athlete from what was then known as the GDR, which is uh, the German Democratic Republic, or what was popularly known as East Germany yeah. at the time. This is another final event. I believe this is the final of the 3,000 meter steeple chase. So this is the event where they jump over hurdles and not do pond. So. There was a time when the Kenyans were untouchable and 
had a streak where since 1965 they have not even been beaten in the Super Chase. But over the last few years, we've had the Moroccans and uh, more prominently the Ethiopians matching the Kenyans in events that they monopolized for several decades. And so this will be an intriguing run. The exciting thing is that the Kenyans, and there are two of them in this final, tend to tag team, they tend to run as a team and work together to the finish line. So there'll be a lot of subplots to this, how the athletes will be running. Uh, there are quite a number of Ethiopians as well. So um, we'll see how this plays out. And there are a couple of Moroccans as well. So the teams will be working together, trying to outdo each other, trying to put their colleagues in a good position that allows them to um, finish in a medal position. So here's one to enjoy here at the University of Ghana Stadium live in Accra. So, the final of the men's 3,000 meters triple chase, like I indicated, there will be three medal events this evening. One of them you've already seen, the discus throw, taken by Victor Hogan of South Africa, with Kanusi Osama of Algeria in uh, the silver medal place, and also Namibia's uh, Ryan William taking the bronze medal. This is another one of the medal events this evening, finals this evening, and then after that, the women's 5,000 meter final will also happen later tonight, which will also be a medal event. No heats in the discus throw or the 3,000 meter steeple chase, which is about to happen. It's just straight to a final, and the winners will be. So the Stipple Chase is a very specialized event. Absolutely. Not every country fills athletes in this. And then it's not just a case of having long distance runners who are capable of uh, participating in the Stipple Chase. It takes a lot of exertion to be able to finish the Stipple Chase. Um, and you would have to be skilled to be able to do the normal jump and the jumping into the pool. And still keep your composure over the distance.
It's a men's triple chase, and they are off their mark. The Kenyans like to run from the front, and almost immediately, they run to the front. And look out for the team play between the athletes from the various countries. There are three Kenyans in this race, three Ethiopians,